Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out uh, this release of Manjaro, which features a fairly new desktop environment. This is Cute Fish. It's a modern, it's basically a Mac OS X styled uh, desktop environment that does actually remind me quite a bit of Deepin. And it seems like it's built better and it runs a little bit better than Deepin. It is a Chinese desktop environment and it is built primarily for their uh, operating system, Cutefish OS. But in this video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at the Manjaro version of this, which if we go ahead and look over here, it was just about less than a day ago, so 19 hours ago as of recording this when the second version of this was released. So there's a lot of bug fixes, so now I could actually put this on some physical hardware. This is running off of a laptop and make this video so I can show you guys this new edition of Manjaro. Uh, it is a developer build, so you're not gonna be able to find this on the normal Manjaro website, but I will have links down below if you're interested in checking this out. So let's go ahead and jump back over to the Cutefish OS website. This will give us some more information. And with that said, there's really not that much information about this on the website uh, quite yet. Uh, we see just some typical uh, kind of advertising stuff, make a better experience, desktop OS, better user experience, uh, stability and security. They do have some custom applications, which we will be diving into, including their uh, camera, calculator, files, their own terminal settings, and looks like a notepad application. We'll go ahead and jump through all those. And then if I go ahead and scroll down here, it's open source, obviously, it's a Linux distribution. And then down here, we have uh, team, friends, and community. Uh, you see Gene OS is one of their friends, so there might be some sort of partnership or cross-collaboration between the two teams. I've covered Gene OS in the past. It's a uh, death, uh, tablet Linux distribution, so if you're interested in that, you could click the little I up there in the corner. Uh, but there's really not much info. If I go over to like about and then scroll up, you can see it's literally a paragraph, which basically repeats a lot of the things the homepage says. Uh, they have a Telegram, Discord, email, all that fun stuff. Uh, there's much more information over here on their Twitter page, including the fact that they're gonna have a global menus soon, which is gonna be what this bar up here is primarily for. Uh, you can see right now it just has my uh, current open application. But like, for example, if I open up something like their files application, uh, eventually what I think is going to be happening is this is going to say like file edit preferences help all that fun stuff up here as a global menu which we can kind of see if we go ahead and open up this image on Twitter you could see file edit view bookmarks all that cool stuff so they're really going for the uh, Mac OS X uh, user experience with uh, the system and I noticed the uh, people in China really do like the uh, Apple UI because uh, a lot of the distributions that come out of China or the desktop environments, anything like that really seem to mimic uh, Mac as far as the overall desktop GUI goes. And you can see on here it's running Arch. It's really easy to install if you want to install it on an Arch-based system. But this is the Manjaro uh, iOS file that I went ahead and downloaded. So let's go ahead and check this out. When you don't have any applications open, we can see it doesn't really show too much up here. But if we go ahead and throw our mouse up to the top corner, it shows our active windows. So we could go ahead and select those if we want to, or just minimize it. Um, if we go over here, we have OBS Studio, which I, is what I have running. It's one of the few things I went ahead and installed on this after the fact. Right here is our system tray, and you can see the whole thing kind of highlight right here. If I go ahead and click on it, it gives me easy access to disable my Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and I could go into dark mode. So if I go ahead and click on that, you can see it kind of turns everything a little bit gray. You tap it on, tap on it again, and it uh, goes back. Now you might not be able to see this, but this is actually working on my desktop. Um, yeah, that so that works very well. Um, volume control. I, I haven't run into any significant problems on this. I've only been using it to go ahead, download and install a couple things. Uh, if we go over here, we have settings, power, we have our battery percentage. And if I go ahead and tap on the battery percentage, it will actually open up the settings page with your battery percentage and your maximum capacity. And while we're already in here, let's go ahead and check out all these settings here. So we have our WLAN, which this is my current Wi-Fi network or your wired stuff here. If we go into display, we do have a lot of options here, such as your brightness, 
my resolution, refresh rate, rotation, and scale. Uh, I'm not going to test the scale right now because I'm recording and I don't want to screw it all up, but it is cool all that is there. Uh, it's very organized out of the gate. That's one thing I am noticing. Everything that you'd expect is here. If we go under appearance, we have light and dark. So if I tap on dark, it gives you that dark aesthetic. I'm going to keep it light just for the purposes of this video. Uh, we have our accent color here. So like you can see, this is blue. This is blue. If I switched it to red, it would switch that accent to red. And then we have fonts and some other stuff here. If we go over to background, let's see what they kind of include in this. It does look, yeah, this is, this might be by the, or very close collaboration with the Jing OS team because I, some of these do look familiar. Uh, if we go over to dock, you can switch the positioning and the size. So if I set it to huge, it does make it rather large or small is honestly, if I was using this, what I'd probably end up going with. But for now, I'm going to keep it on large just for while we're recording. And then we have our uh, system stuff. So this is our user currently logged in. Here is where you can add control and manage your users here. Uh, we have our language stuff, battery we already saw. And then if we go down to about, you can see that this is running Cutefish OS as far as the desktop environment goes. And it is running the uh, 0.2 version. And you can see that we are running the 5.10 kernel on Manjaro. And then if you are interested, these are the specifications of this laptop. So that's really about it as far as settings, just like a lot of these other desktop environments or distributions. It doesn't have that many customization options, but it is enough that if you're a new user or you're used to something that's limiting like Mac or even Windows, you're, you're going to have a good old time in here. So down here on our dock, we have uh, Firefox. File Manager, we have the Add Remove software, which I'm pretty sure is specific to Manjaro. Uh, we have the settings that were just in Calculator, OBS usually isn't there. And then we have our Trash Bin. So first let's go ahead and open up our File Manager one more time. I did temporarily open it up, but just so you guys can see the overall aesthetics of it here. Uh, we have everything on the side, all the icons look really good. Uh, if I go ahead and click over here, you could easily navigate to any directory by typing. If I click right here, you can change how things are laid out. So you could do icons, list, name, size, date, all that fun stuff, anything you'd expect out of a basic file manager. If I go ahead and right click, we can access our properties. So here's where you could go ahead and change things for this directory, or we can right click and open in terminal. And this is going to be a quick way to get to the terminal. So it opened up pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and resize this here. So this is their terminal. We can see that they do have a little bit of a custom bash script here. I'm not sure if it's going to be like this for Cutefish OS or if this is just a Manjaro thing, which it does look like it is. Let's see if they have NeoFetch out of the gate. They do not. They will now. Okay, so let's go ahead and run NeoFetch just to see uh, what that gives us. So let's uh, go up to NeoFetch and then we can see what we're rolling with. So it is Manjaro Linux, as we said. The window manager is KWIN, so it's using the KDE Plasma window manager. Desktop environment is Cutefish. The shell out of default is ZSH. And the package count, I did install a couple things, but before I installed it, it's probably in the high 600s, low 700s. So that's not too bloated for a uh, system like this. So let's go ahead and close out the terminal now, close out that file manager. Go ahead and go to our launcher and see what they have on here. So it is a Manjaro system, so they have the user guide and the Manjaro setting manager. You've all probably seen that before, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. They have a firewall, Manjaro Hello. Calculator is one of the applications that they went ahead and built. So it's a basic sleek calculator here. Let's make sure it works. 2 plus 2 does in fact equal 4, so the calculator is functionable. <laughs> Let's go over to our launcher. We have the add remove software, they're using Pulse Audio, so you have the Pulse Audio preferences and volume control. Bluetooth Manager, it looks like they are using Kate, which is another KDE Plasma application, making me think kind of like how a Jing OS does. Maybe this is a, a fork or built off of uh, KDE Plasma somehow. Let's open that up to see what it looks like. Yep, just normal Kate, nothing too special about it. Um, not saying Kate's bad, Kate is by far one of my favorite text editors, uh, but it did show on the main website that they are going to eventually have their own text editor, or they might, it's just not on the Manjaro version. Uh, we have console, which we've already checked out. They have the Q PDF viewer, and then I went ahead and added um, GIMP 
Uh, the reason I added GIMP is because it's a very good tool that I use to see if the uh, desktop environment can handle the buttons and the really small icons and things like that. Because I know, for example, on Deepin, it really didn't handle it very well. And it looks like it is just fine. All the icons are fine. There's no big weird squares around it. They haven't uh, went too crazy, so that's good. Um, that's really about it. It's not too loaded. It's very light. It's not bloated. So there's really not much playing around that we could do. You just go ahead and install things, build your system. If I open up uh, OBS Studio real quick, kind of the same thing with uh, GIMP. You can see all the icons and all the buttons and everything look just fine. So this is a pretty cool project that I am uh, very excited to see go forward. Uh, if you do know if this is made by the same team as Jing OS here, I have my desktop open. You guys can't see this, but I'm gonna go ahead. Um, yeah, under friends, it's just a link to Jing OS. So uh, I really am looking forward to them building up their website a little bit more so I can see some more information on exactly what it is. There's a link to a, a Chinese website which takes you to a miit.gov.china website. So um, I don't know what it says, but I might figure that out. I'll, I'll have everything linked down below. So if you did enjoy this video and you are, and if you are interested in this, please let me know. Uh, like I said, I will be checking out the Cutefish OS actual uh, operating system uh, pretty soon. So do look forward to that. And with that, I'll figure out what it's based off of and all that fun stuff. So uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, comment down below with any thoughts or opinions on this. And do subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. With all that said, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.